Hey, what's up, friends? Welcome to today's episode of the Green Industry Podcast, backed by popular demand, my friend, Dr. Frank Holloman. Hey, and, Paul, how you doing? At the greenindustrypodcast.com studios, and we are broadcasting this on the YouTube, Dr. Frank. I didn't know that. Yeah, so say hello to everybody on, on hey, the YouTube. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Out there. That's one of our goals for 2-2, is uh, to get more content on video. Okay. In addition to the audio, and of course... Our friends listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, many others. So it's good to have you back in studio, Dr. Frank. How was your weekend, man? Oh, it was very good. I had a restful weekend, and that was what I needed. Good. And I guess in real time, this is coming out on a Friday, so uh, getting ready for a new weekend yeah. <laughs> coming up. <laughs> I like the weekends, man. Me too. Yes, sir. Well, Dr. Frank, you got uh, that doctorate from Georgia Tech. Uh, introduce yourself for those who might not know the legend, Dr. Frank. Okay. Well, uh, number one is I'm a friend of Paul's, and I think Paul does a great job, and I enjoy uh, talking with him, particularly about business, which is what we do on the podcast from time to time when you invite me. And uh, But my background is unusual. I have a, a Ph.D. in atomic and molecular physics from Georgia Tech, uh, so I learned I learned how to learn. That that's really what I got out of that. I uh, learned a lot of physics and math, but I also learned how to learn and new things. And really, when you graduate from high school or you graduate from college, you have a commencement service. Mm -hmm. And commencement means commencing. Commencing means the start of something. And yet, that's the last thing you do when you graduate. Is you have the commencement service, which means start. Mm -hmm. So what what are you starting to do? with a commencement service when you finish your academic program. You're commencing to a lifetime of learning. That's the whole idea behind a commencement. It's, it's putting a stake in the ground that you're commencing now on a lifetime of learning. So along the way, I learned a lot more things uh, after, after college. And uh, some of that was business because I went into business for myself and other things were uh, related to health and nutrition, which is uh, the industry I'm in right now. And um, what's exciting, though, is as you get older, you get to share what you know. And that's that's what we do. We, we talk about business a, a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, uh, I worked in the telecom industry for a lot of years uh, during the corporate world <coughs> and um, doing research. And then I went in business for myself uh, over 20 years ago and had various businesses. They were online and offline uh, product services and uh, I mean product businesses and service businesses. So I have an, a very eclectic background. Yeah. So we're going to, you've done thorough research on marketing and obviously learn marketing through experiences as you build your uh, previous businesses. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And then on a future episode, because I want to have Fridays with Frank where we have <laughs> you on on Fridays. Uh, want to talk about the health and nutrition. That'll be another episode for another day, I think, at the start of the year. Yeah. Although I was at the gym today and it was um, barely anybody was even there. So I don't know what's going on. Normally it's like the first week of January, it's a packed house. And uh, Yeah, and it then it dwindles after about two weeks. Yeah, well, my, Everybody's New Year's resolutions dissolves after about two weeks. Yeah, my trainer says, because I go to a smaller gym, so it's not, I know you go to the big one where, you know, <laughs> you guys got a sauna in there, right? Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's nice. And uh, the tr the um, training center where I, I work out, we have like one little room that's got like this AstroTurf stuff, though. It's really cool. We just got it. And then they got one, basically one other room with some dumbbells and it's, it's really minimal. It's like one fiftieth the size of your gym. But my trainer says there'll still be an influx of new people, people that come in January. And then she says by March, only one of them will survive. Only, only by one of March. The, yeah. She's wow. like, only one of the newbies wow. will keep with it. The, the other ones will wow. give up by then. You know, Paul, that's a metaphor for life because uh, being consistent is the key to success. Doing the right things physically to build your body up, doing the right things nutritionally, health-wise, keep your health up. Doing the right things consistently, even if they're small things in your business, to keep your business flourishing. Yeah, and that actually influenced the journal that I made because we did 90 days uh -huh. to write down your goals to, to transform your, your life. And part of where I got that 90 days was from, was from my trainer because after 90 days, only one person 
actually ah. walked out their their New Year's resolution. And so anyway, uh, it's called the Diligent Shell Prosper. It's a gold tracker and journal I got over there. I got six of them over there. Yeah, you gave <laughs> me a s- copy. Yeah, of it. I know. I, you you asked me. Yeah, I'm going to use it in the new year. Okay. I, I love that book. Yeah. And so anyway, those six over there, I'm I'm, I'm sending those out to some folks. Uh, got to do that probably today. Excellent. But anyway. All that was a nice introduction that uh, Dr. Frank's a friend of mine off air and uh, definitely uh, peaks those ratings when he comes on the air with your uh, intelligence. And, and Mr. Producer said some kind of comment like just it, I shouldn't talk when you're on. Just you talk. <laughs> and and okay. when I do talk, then you just interrupt me and say, shut up, Paul. And, and OK, get to well, so teach us about marketing. Here's Dr. what they Frank. here's what they realize that we're each other's fan club. <laughs> We really do enjoy. You're book smart, I'm street smart. Yeah. <laughs> Together we we can really be a powerhouse. Okay, so <clears throat> I think what um, people who are in business, I've been in business for over 20 years, and I've had different businesses, but you're always thinking as a business owner, Paul, and I know you're doing that uh, in your lawn care uh, landscaping business. How do you take the business to the next level? What do you need to do? And... What we find ourselves doing is thinking about all kinds of things uh, in our private moments as a business owner. Uh, And usually there's a lot of emotion associated with it, ups and downs. And uh, there's so many things to think about. What do you think about? Well, you should think about the important things. But how do you know what the important things are? And that's where research comes in. There are There are academics that have written books where they've studied thousands of businesses, big and small and medium size, and they found commonalities about what businesses were doing right that made them successful and took them to the next level and what businesses did wrong. And they they either either failed Mm -hmm. or they left a lot of money on the table. And there's a lot of commonalities. Uh, across the board, and people write books about these things. They lecture on them, and uh, people can study them. Well, I've studied them. And uh, so what I love talking about, because I love business, is uh, what what people can do as business owners to improve their businesses. And the key is to, uh, one of the keys, I should say, is to spend your time thinking about the most productive areas of of improving your business because there there are a few things you can do and focus on that makes all the difference in the world uh there's basically a rule called the pareto rule the 80 20 rule and that is anything where there is a limited set of resources this is a key principle that makes the point anytime there is a limited amount of resources that are competing for something uh, then the Pareto rule emerges where there is a very minimal set of things that are more important than the the larger set of things that are associated with it. Let me be more specific. Uh, the Pareto rule was first determined by an economist. I, I can't remember when it was. I think it was in the 1700s. And he looked at all the different countries Uh, that were more advanced and not advanced. And he looked at their economies as an economist, and he found that across the board in everybody's country, no matter what country it was, that uh, 80% of the wealth was owned by 20% of the people. Hmm. And um, it turns out that (coughs) if you actually distributed the wealth evenly across the nation, now, he didn't do this test, but this is a theory, and I think it's been tested. Within so many years, it would be back to 80% of the wealth owned by 20% of the people. But that's true everywhere. If you go into your closet, 20, 80%, 20% of the clothes in your closet you wear, and 80% you don't much. Wow, in that's other words, pretty good. In other words, 20% of the clothes in your closet you wear 80% of the time. I always wear this shirt. You always wear that sports shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I, I didn't always, even think I about wear these that. Jeans, yeah. um, it goes beyond that. A, a 20% of the oil wells on the planet produce, 20% of those oil wells produce 80% of the oil. Um, on the internet, 
of the websites get 80% of the traffic. Wow. Now, it's not always 80-20. It, it varies a little bit. Sometimes it's 90-10 or sometimes it's 70-30, but on average it's 80-20. If there's more competition for the resource, like on the Internet, it's your attention. That's a resource. There's only so many eyeballs looking on the Internet, so there's a competition. Mm -hmm. And that comes out to about 80-20. Mm. And, and so out of all the things oh, and you know they even use this in uh, quality control it, at one time the japanese uh, products were considered when i was a kid we used to make fun of anything from japan it was considered cheap and uh, but then one of the big things that happened in transition in terms of quality in japan is they hired this guy named Deming his last name was Deming and he brought quality control because he fig he used the 80 20 rule and realize that 80% of the defects on the assembly line in ma manufacturing a car, 80% of those defects came from 20% of the, of the problems. Mm. And if you could find that 20%, you'd get rid of almost all of your defects on the production line. Wow. And so they, they took him seriously in that country, in, in that industry, in that country. And they started producing higher and higher quality. Mm -hmm. And now um, Japanese cars that come from Japan are considered very high quality. Uh, and, um, you know, that's debatable, but that's, that's a, a lot of the current thinking. They up their quality. Well, here's the point. I guess this is a long way of saying the point, Paul, is that there's so many things you could be thinking about to improve in your business. But there is a, so a small subset probably around 20% of all the things you can think about or you have thought about, and uh, maybe with great emotion, about what can I do in my business to take it to the next level. Well, there's a small subset, maybe around 20% of the things you've thought about are the things that really make about 80% of the difference. Mm -hmm. So if you could find out what those things are, that's powerful. And so that's... Um, that's what I spend a lot of time thinking about. What are the elements of business? Uh, the same is true in relationships, even. Relationships with our spouses or our girlfriends or our, our kids, uh, our friends. There are certain elements of relationship. If you focus on them, that they'll improve. And so um, we kind of discussed that recently, didn't we, Paul? Absolutely. We, we did uh, nine modules talking about marketing, and, and you broke this thing down. I'm sitting here, Dr. Frank, getting so fired up because as you were sharing, and I, I'm not the scholar you are to research. I've heard some of the bright minds of marketing. I, I know some of their names, some of their theories. I'm talking 1% of what you know. So as you're sharing this, it was like I was drinking from a fire hose because I was, my mind was just exploding with, wow, I have, I, I, A, I didn't even realize how I, I was poorly I was marketing, and B, I was realizing, okay, I got to fine tune this, tweak that, adjust that, add this, because uh, as you know, we discussed getting and keeping customers, there's a right way to do it. There's proven ways to do it that work. And then there's, there's um, ways that are um, vanity. And so anyways, it was a blessing for me to get to learn from you. And, and uh, that, yeah. was a, that was a great time. And see, Paul, the reason why uh, you brought up marketing uh, and why we discussed that as a focus for bringing your business to the next level is because what is business? Uh, given that you have a quality product or a quality service, I mean, that's entry level. Right. If you don't have a quality product or a quality service, you're not even in the game. Mm -hmm. But if you are in the game with a quality service or product and skills to back all that up, then business becomes getting and keeping customers is what you just alluded to. That's the essence of business. And that's what you really need to focus on as a business owner is how can I get more customers, but not just more customers, better customers. Now, what's a better customer? A better customer doesn't have to be the wealthiest customer. Uh, the best customer is the customer that fits your business perfectly. What you offer is m m more what they want and need than other customers in your market. The, the right fit. 
because that's when you're serving them the best. So uh, there's a whole lot about getting new customers. And then uh, once you have that customer, keep that customer. And that means more than just making them happy so that they retain you. It's also making them understand that you bring better value than their competition so they won't switch over to your competition in everybody's market. Usually there's competition. And it's even more than that, Paul. It's keeping that customer by offering them more products and services so that um, they're more invested mm -hmm. in what you bring to their life to make their life better. And, and at the same time, as you're making their life better by bringing more value to their life mm -hmm. as a customer, you get more profit. And that's the thing. Uh, if if you had to say one sound bite about improving business, it's finding ways to bring more value to the people in your market that that want it and need it. If you focus on value, then you will be in increasing your profits and taking your business to the next level. But you can't even focus on value unless you really hone in on how to bring in new customers and how to keep them. So that's really the essence of business. There you go. Well, Dr. Frank, we're going to take a moment and thank today's show sponsors. And uh, coming up, we're going to learn more about how we can improve our business and get better customers. We'll be back more with Dr. Frank Holloman coming right up. All righty, guys. One of your favorite guests returns, Dr. Frank Holloman. Good to have you back on the program, man. Paul, well, it's good to be back. It's always good to be with you. Yeah, that was a that was a commercial break. You're you're looking at me like, what's going on? <laughs> and so, <laughs> in our in the e trainings that we made, they were just thirty minutes straight. We would just go the, uh, the whole time with no interruptions. And you, I didn't I didn't give you a heads up that we gotta we gotta have commercials around here. Keep Mr. Producer um, paid up. <laughs> okay, uh, obscene profit timeouts. Got it. Okay. So, all right, we're back. Teach us how to improve our business. Okay, well. There's a couple approaches, and what a lot of business owners do, Paul, is they uh, they say, well, I got this idea, I got that idea, let's try this, let's try that, and it really evolves into a trial and error endeavor. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you'll figure that out. You'll figure out what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, people like to say that it their approach to uh, business building, which is getting customers and keeping customers, is to take a bowl of spaghetti, throw it on the wall, and see what sticks. That's the analogy. Mm -hmm. and what sticks is what you want to do. And um, that approach does work. Eventually, you do figure it out if you make enough um, mistakes. But that is a time-consuming strategy and a very uh, cost uh, laden strategy uh, there's a better approach and a better approach is to not try to reinvent the wheel and over spending a lot of time and spending a lot of money come to the conclusions that everybody else came to who's successful because mm -hmm. success leaves leaves a trail mm -hmm. and and that trail has been studied by many others and so um, there's a couple things you can do you can then uh, seek out a consultant, which it can also be expensive, or you could just learn mm -hmm. and learn from others. And uh, what, what I think is the easiest way to learn is just to get a condensed version or a Reader's Digest version of all the great thought that's out there. Because uh, that way you're getting, you're getting the real essence. And uh, that's what we were talking about uh, recently on that e-training that, that yeah, we did. Yeah, we, we went in-depth on, on marketing. And so give us a little 30,000-foot um, view of, of marketing and, and how we can uh, market our business better to get those better customers and keep them. Yes. And uh, you alluded to that in the very first thing that you said uh, in this session was about your working out in the gym and about how after 90 days, I thought it was two weeks, but... The, the trainer that you have would know better than I would. It, it's really like within 90 days you were saying that um, people um, dr drop out. 
uh, probably some all through that period, right, but right. certainly by the 90 days. Only one newbie survived. Yeah, that's amazing. In the March. And so what that really means, in my mind anyway, is that you need a system. If you, you need to consistently do the right things. And the way that one would do the right things, whether it's in relationships, it's working out in the gym, or it's building your business to take it to the next level, you really need to institute systems. Systems then work more on automatic. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you may be doing things like, for example, in uh, marketing, you may be on the phone and you call, you got to do something. But it's a system. This is the time that I do my follow-up phone calls, you know, maybe an hour a day. Or um, you hire somebody who's trained to do that for you. It's, it's basically a system which keeps you in the lane of consistency. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's a lot of what business is, is building the right systems. In fact, the right way to look at a business um, there's a, there's a famous book by Robert Kiyosaki. It's called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Have you ever heard of that book? Yes, sir. Yeah, and basically he talks a lot about that. He, he says that, um, now this is his idea, and you could take it to his extreme or any um, amount up to that point. But he says a real business owner is one who um, has worked in every box in the organizational chart. Uh, where at the top of the organizational chart of your company is the CEO. And then below that are the vice presidents of different areas like finance and operations and um, planning. And then below that are like your directors and all the way down to the people who do the tasks. Now, if you're a big organization, it's a big org organizational chart. If you're small uh company it's a, it's it's compressed but there are basic functions that big and small companies all have to do somebody has to do them it's a function it's well dis defined of what has to be done when you're first starting out where you're by yourself you basically have your name in every box on the org chart and what a business owner does uh, if he wants to be the ultimate business owner and this may not be everyone's dream because some people just love what they do and they want to keep doing it but as they get bigger they're going to have to hire people so that they can bring greater value to more people in their market uh, what what you eventually do is you erase your name out of the box on the low level in the org chart and replace it with somebody you hired, but you would never hire that person until you figured out a system of how to do it the way your company wants to do it, which you believe is the best way to do it and the most efficient and profitable way to do it in a way that keeps your customer. And and that system then is well-defined. You figured it out as a business owner. You hired somebody and you say, hey, don't reinvent the wheel. Do it the way I have done it as the business owner. All I want you to do is turn the crank. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the next box on the bottom level of the org chart, and you figure out that system, and then another system. Then you go up to the next level in your org chart and figure out the system there and say, in my company, as the business owner, this is how we do this, and this is how we do that. And um, we're open to suggestions, but, but this is basically how we do it. And if you have some improvements, let me know. We'll, we'll change the system to tweak it. But the last thing you do as a business owner is you hire somebody to run your company as a CEO to replace you. And then uh, Kiyosaki says in his book that then you go on vacation for a month. The business is very profitable. It's functioning perfectly. They don't need you to be there. And then when you come back on vacation for a month, the business is still running and it's actually making more money than when you left. That's the true business owner, according to him. Now, you don't have to take it to that level. Some people love running their business, and they'll never hire a CEO, but, but that's one thing that you can do. And that's a business. Once it, all the org chart is filled with other people's names that have been hired, and they're doing a really good job because you were careful to pick them and train them, that is a business full of systems. And it's basically running on automatic as far as you're concerned. Yeah, and I think it stretches our mind, especially in this industry, 
to to just think, okay, three years from now or five years from now, I'm going to take a month off. I'm going to go to wherever, <laughs> Florida, <laughs> okay, St. Thomas, Bahamas, wherever you're going to go for a month. And, and that makes some people nervous, but it stretches our mind. What, what, what would I really have to do to make that a reality and, the, and, and not just be gone for a month, but be the business is running successfully, profitably, perfectly for that month. And then you come back and it's still run. Everything's healthy. Um, it, it really starts to, to make us think, OK, we got to get it together. We do have to get things uh, organized and systems in place. Uh, so I really appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, and uh, well, I'm not saying that every business owner has to fill their entire org chart over time and, and walk away from the business and just uh, deposit the checks. Uh, different business owners want to do different things. Some, company, some business owners want to keep it medium-sized. Some want to keep it small. Mm -hmm. Some want to keep more hands-on at some level. You build the business as a business owner to fit your lifestyle and your personality. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Quite honestly, whatever your personality is, your strengths and even weaknesses, your organization that you build will reflect you as the business owner. And so that's, that's great news, really, because that's an incentive for the business owner to continually not only improving his business, but improving himself. And, and it just raises uh, the tide and everything gets better. Yeah. Well, guys, we're going to have more with Dr. Frank next Friday. If you will uh, come back, we there's so much more to talk about improving our business, improving our marketing, and I want to uh, get you on one of these Fridays, improving our nutrition and health, because not only you thoroughly research marketing <laughs> business, but uh, you also know about the um, mitochondria. The energy production organelles in the cell. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. Okay, all right. <laughs> it, it, you're the sum of the five people you hang out with. You ever heard that? Yes. And so I, I just try to hang around you and shut up and learn. Okay, Paul. So if you guys want to learn from Dr. Frank, uh, he recently was in the studio. We did nine modules. It's the Green Industry Marketing Essentials. They're 30 minutes each, each module. Dr. Frank shared the best of the best marketing tips and advice out there to build your business. So that's available at greenindustrypodcast.com, Dr. Frank. And it will add value to your life and business. It it rocked my world just learning from you in that as we were, I was sitting here, you know, doing the sessions with you, but I was like, wow, why, why didn't you tell me this 10 years ago? And you know, it's good about that, Paul, too. It's not only good information, but it gets the juices flowing in your brain. Anyone who is serious about business, you'll say, wow, that's good information. And then you'll think of even more things yes. that are more tailored to how you do business. Yes. So... Everyone listening to the sound of my voice right now, you will benefit from the Green Industry Marketing Essentials for sure. Uh, just visit greenindustrypodcast.com and uh, you'll get the, the videos there on your computer or phone or wh whatever way you log in and, and uh, really get a lot of value out of that. So I appreciate you taking all that time you took, Dr. Frank, to research marketing and to learn that 20% that's the best. And experience. And experience, yeah. Not to... Dr. Frank's had some very successful businesses. So I'm thankful that you put that product out there for this community. So you guys can uh, get that at uh, greenindustrypodcast.com and uh, Marketing Essentials. So. Yes. Happy to do that. Cool. Well, we'll get you back on next Friday, Dr. Frank. Okay, Paul. And uh, in the meantime, you got any, any clever log off? Saying, yeah, goodbye, everybody. Okay, <laughs> go see, catch you on the next one.